Amen. You have your Bible. Let's turn to Luke chapter 24 this morning. And the question is asked, what are you looking for? And I'm sure as we think about that question, we think about the glorious power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 24, let's all stand out of respect to God's Word as we read in verses 1 through 12. Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, thereabout, behold, two men stood by them, in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed and wondering in himself at that which had come to pass. Father, bless your word. We thank you for it. We praise you for your goodness to us. And how we praise you today that you are alive and well. And we know that you're moving in this very room today. For those who have never received you, you come in life to give them life eternal. For those who are already saved by your grace, you come to them to give them life in the family of God to join your church, to be a part of your family serving and living for you. And Father, for all of us, what an opportunity to come and say, Jesus, we just want to thank you. Thank you that because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. Hallelujah, what a Savior. And we praise you and worship you here today in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I want you to go back in your Bibles and go down to verse 5. And I want you to underline the last uh, sentence in that Bible, which is really a question. Because the Bible says, Why seek ye the living uh, among the dead? Our title this morning is, What are you looking for? What are you trying to find in your life? You see, at this time of year and in this moment and this place, people come to church for various reasons. I don't understand quite as I said in the early morning sunrise service. I don't know how, what is it that draws people to church on Easter Sunday? What is it that draws people to the house of God? Is it the very fact that Jesus Christ was dead and buried and rose again? Why did you come today? What is it that you're seeking and what are you looking for? Now one of the amazing things is that this question can be so thought-provoking that it searches our heart and moves upon our soul. You could say to all the people out here in the world, those who are involved in drink and drugs, promiscuous affairs, you could say to them, hey, what are you doing out here in the world? You're trying to seek a life out here among the dead. Hey, why do you seek the living among the dead? Let me tell you where the living are. The living are in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. I've seen in some churches, they look like they're dead and buried already. And I can tell you, it's like the old story, the EMTs were called because somebody died in the morning service. And they came and they looked over the crowd and they carried out four people before they got the right one. Well, may that never happen to us. May we look alive because Jesus is alive and Jesus is alive in our hearts and in our lives. So why do you go out there in the world thinking the world is the answer? I want to tell you, the world is not the answer for your life today. The answer is found in the living Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who went to that cross and literally died and God raised him from the dead. You see, never underestimate the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is so important. We saw this morning, had Christ not arisen, we would have no Savior. If we had no Savior, there'd be no forgiveness of sin. If there were no forgiveness of sin, we'd all be bound for hell with no hope. But thank God Jesus is alive, and He offers to every man, woman, boy and girl, teenager, mom and dad and grandparents, in this room and beyond this room, that if you will come to Jesus, you can be saved by His grace and you can have life everlasting. You know, I've ever understood when we look at the story and you ask folks, do you believe Jesus lived on this earth? Yes. You believe He was born of a virgin? Yes. You believe He, he believed that He lived 33 years? Yes. You believe He was crucified on a cross? Oh, yes. Do you believe that He was really buried and rose again from the dead? Oh, yes. Then why aren't you saved? Why haven't you ever come publicly and said, Lord Jesus, what I believe in my heart, I express in my life, and I'm willing to say I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ, who certainly was not ashamed of me. Why do we come and yet we need a church home? We need to be a part of the body of Christ. Why not today come and say, hey, I want to join this part of God's family and cast my lot here with the family of God. If I ever leave here, I'll go somewhere else and serve the Lord. But this is where I need to be because Jesus is alive. Folks, I believe Jesus is alive in Hoboken Baptist Church. I believe it at work in Hoboken Baptist Church. And, and uh, as the old saying goes, I want to get under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. And I want to be in the presence of what God is doing. And I want to enjoy the blessing and the power and the promise of the living God. And what he did in his resurrection affords for all of us that opportunity to be saved, to be a part of the family of God, to come and bring our prayer petitions before Him. A lot of the world believes that Jesus died, but they have a lot of trouble believing that He arose again from the dead. Let me tell you to understand that there are many, many historical authentications, and there's certainly a Bible full of facts that said, though He were dead, yet He lives and those who believe in Him will never die because they will live forever with Him in the presence of God. Jesus is alive. And He's here among us this very day to meet needs, to touch hearts, to move within our life. Well, when you think about the resurrection, and we've often said, you know, I know we celebrate holidays in so many different ways that have nothing to do with the truth of the Bible. 
We do it at Christmas and we do it at Easter. Easter really has nothing to do with chocolate bunnies and boiled eggs, although we'll all consume a lot of chocolate and eat a lot of eggs today. But the fact is that it has nothing to do with new clothes or baked ham. It has nothing to do, it has to do with the living Son of God who became flesh and came to this earth and died for our sins and rose again that we might live forever. Hallelujah. What does this resurrection mean? Well, let's look at a few things here together this morning. First of all, this re uh, resurrection gives undeniable proof that Jesus is God's only Son. You can jot down the Scriptures and go look at them later on. And in John chapter 10, verses 17 through 18, He said, I lay down my life that I may take it again. The marvelous thing about the cross is that nobody took the life of Jesus from Him. He freely gave His life for you and for me. It was not stolen from Him. It was not arrested from Him. It was given by Him. And boy, when I think about there was somebody who would die for me, how can I not live for Him? Amen? But if He loved me enough to die for me, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you're going to say. I'm going to live for Him. Amen? And I'm going to be what He would have me to be. That's the glorious truth about coming forward and giving your heart to Jesus or joining this church. It doesn't matter what others think or say. It matters what's between you and the living God. And because you know Him, you can rejoice in His holy presence. First of all, He had authority to lay down His life. Nobody took it from Him. The Bible says as John the Baptist looked at Him coming up the bank of the Jordan River, Behold, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. What did that mean? That meant that before God hung the first star, He knew there would be sinful man on earth. And He said, we're going to devise a plan whereby you can go to earth and you're going to hang on that cross as the Lamb of God and you're going to die for their sin and when they receive you, they'll have everlasting life. That'll be the only hope that mankind has. Do you realize on the day that Jesus was hung on that cross as the Lamb of God, over in the temple, there were the priests who were, who were slaughtering the lambs one after another. The blood was running down the streets and down those cobblestones as they sacrificed those lambs and they put them to death for an atonement for the men who came to bring them as a sacrifice. But old Jesus silently screams from the cross and says to those priests, put away your knives, get rid of your flesh hooks. Do away with this place of sacrifice because as Hebrew says, once and for all, for all mankind, Jesus had authority to lay down his life. And he gave it that we might be saved. But he also had another authority. He had the authority to take up his life again. Now you say, that's an amazing thing. Nobody else could do that. Not any of the rulers of the world, not any of the world's religions. Not any of those bathed in the occults of this world can look at any leader of any sect of any group and say that they died but they're alive again. But boy, let me tell you something. I can look at my Savior and I know He being dead yet liveth. Amen. And He is alive forevermore. He had authority to take it up again. Hey, one of the funniest lines in all the Bible is when Pilate instructs the soldiers and he said, seal that tomb and make it sure. In other words, you seal it where no one can get in and no one can get out. <laughs> Boy, he just didn't know our God, did he? Had no power of understanding what God could do. The stone was not moved so he could get out. The stone was moved so the witnesses could get in. And that's what we saw this morning in the power and the promise of God. If God would attend to every detail like he did in the Bible concerning Jesus Christ, Hear me this morning. He can attend to every detail of your life. What are you worried about? What are you fretting over? What are you depressed about? What are you pondering in your life? Either He is Lord of all or He is not Lord at all. Put your hand in the nail-scarred hand and trust Him because the resurrection gives undeniable proof that Jesus is God's only Son. Secondly, the resurrection totally verifies the scriptures. Amazing thing in Psalm 16, verse 10. Way back over there in the book of Psalms. Here, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to what he said. 
for you will not leave my soul in hell. Now that word hell didn't have to do with the fireplace of torment. Hell was described as the grave. And he said, you will not leave my soul in the grave in hell, neither thy holy one to see corruption. In other words, I may die, <clears throat> but God's not going to leave me in the bowels of death. God is going to raise me up eternally to the glory of God the Father. Now that prophecy made back over there in Psalm 16 verse 10 is verified over here in Luke chapter 24 that we read this morning. He is not here. Why seek ye the living among the dead? You're looking in the wrong place. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Amen. I sometimes want to say to Christians, Jesus is alive. Notify your face. Amen. Oh, to know that Christ is alive in our lives and we're filled with the joy and the blessing of the Lord. We aren't under the circumstances. We're not in the difficulties. Our hand is in the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ who will see us through because he is alive and well. Because he lives, you may live also. So it totally verifies the Scripture. It totally authenticates with undeniable proof that Jesus is God's own Son. And thirdly, it completely ensures our future resurrection. Now you see, these had no idea what the Apostle Paul would write because as far as they knew, Saul was bringing out blasphemies. He was the enemy of the church. But boy, when he got saved, God used him to write all those books in the New Testament. And one of the greatest passages in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says the Lord himself will come to bring about resurrection because he is the first fruits of those who have died. Then one day he's going to come again, and I don't believe it'll be very long, amen? We're right on the very coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you're ready, you're going to go. If you're not ready, you're going to be left behind, so why not get ready? Get ready while you can in trusting the Lord for what he's able to do. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God shall sound. Listen now, and the dead in Christ, those who've died as Christians, shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now oftentimes I hear people say, oh, when Jesus comes back, the graves are going to burst open. There's nothing in there that says the graves are going to burst open. In fact, I have a feeling in the back of my heart, way down there somewhere, that there won't be one stone moved, but the dead will be raised up because stone mean nothing to a, to a man who experiences a resurrection power. God, amen. But then the stones may be moved so that they will be a witness to those who come by and can see. But the fact is that it's going to happen, and, and those who have died as Christians are going to rise first. I've often told you about the smart little fellow who came up to the preacher, and he said, Preacher, well, why are those who've died as Christians going to get to rise first? He said, Because they got six foot further to go, son. That's why. <laughs> but no matter the reason, the fact is that they're going to be raised up in the power and the glory of God. It completely ensures our future. So why should I worry? Hey, if I die before Jesus comes back, I'm going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air when he comes. If I'm alive when Jesus comes back, I'm going to be caught up to meet the Lord in what we call the rapture. And so shall I ever be with the Lord. Because I made that commitment a long time ago. And you may be here today and never made it. I plead with you, come on, come on, come on. Don't put it off. Oh, to be a part of God's family and a part of the church, one of the most glorious things you can do. You need to come today and stand here with me as I sit here and say, Preacher, I want to move my letter. I want to be a part of this church. I want to dedicate my life to God. Or you may need to come and say, Today, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. I don't care what anybody thinks. Mama, daddy, father, mother, son, daughter, sister, brother. I'm just coming to give my heart to Jesus because Jesus gave his all for me. Completely ensures our future through his resurrection. But there's a fourth thing. Look at that carefully. It proves beyond a doubt that there will be a future judgment. I want you to mark Acts chapter 17, verse 31, because the resurrection surrounds so many things. Now notice what the resurrection says. Because he is appointed today in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. What man? The Lord Jesus Christ whom he has ordained, where he has given assurance unto all men. Now look at this. 
in that he raised him from the dead. He has every right to judge because he was raised from the dead. And because he is raised from the dead, he is going to judge mankind. He's going to judge me. He's going to judge you. He's going to judge every one of us. But you see, the difference in a Christian and a non-Christian, according to 1 John, is that when I stand in the presence of God, I'm going to have an advocate with me. I'm going to have a lawyer, the Lord Jesus Christ, to plead my case and announce to his Father that I belong to him. And brother, when you stand in good with the Son, you're going to be welcomed by the Father. Amen. And the glorious truth is that that proclamation is true and unaltered because God raised him from the dead. I have someone to plead my case and to stand with me beyond the shadow of a doubt. It proves beyond any doubt whatsoever there will be a future judgment. Now, do I worry about the judgment? No. Do I, am I afraid about the judgment? No. Why? Because that same Jesus who took my place on the cross is going to stand with me and going to be there. You know, years ago, the story was told of a man who was condemned to die during the Civil War. And no one could, uh, no one could get to the present to be able to ask for a pardon because the man had somewhat been tried innocently and, and uh, had been committed anyway to hang. And his family needed him so badly. He had several children, his wife, and they were paupers. And, and so... The lady, his brother, went to see the president. Nobody would let him in. Nobody would let him in. And there's a little boy who was playing near the gate at the White House, and, and he looked up at the man and he said, Sir, why are you here? He said, I want to see the president. He said, If I don't see the president, my brother's going to hang, and, and I've got to get the president's boy so that, that he can be set free. And the little boy playing in the dirt got up and brushed himself off and reached up and took the man's hand. He said, Come with me. He walked down through the grounds. He walked into the house. Soldiers snapped to attention. He walked on in to the president's office and he said, Father, here's a man who needs to talk to you. And the president said, Welcome, and eventually wrote the pardon that set the man free who was to die. Let me tell you something. When you have the son, you don't fear being in the presence of the father. Amen? Because, because you are welcome in the name of Jesus. It proves beyond a doubt that there will be a future judgment. Well, the resurrection does something else. Number six, number five, the Bible says that it is the basis of Christ's heavenly priesthood. In Hebrews chapter 7, it said, But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Did you know Jesus is busy today? He's busy today, seated at the right hand of the Father, and the Bible said that he's praying for you and he's praying for me. I can't tell how many of you in here today that Jesus is praying for you right now. He's praying for you to make a decision and to come on and give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's praying for you what you know to do, what you understand to do, you need to go ahead and do. Because God, Jesus is praying for you. He lives by the power of an endless life, and he's able to intercede for us. Hey, he's never going to die. He's never going to go away, and he keeps on praying for you today. Do not spurn the prayers of Jesus, and do not turn away from the purpose and the plan and the power of the living God. Come to him today. Number six, notice carefully, it gives power for living the Christian life. Oh, let me tell you today that uh, people say, well, you know, I'd be a Christian, but I just can't live up to it. <laughs> Guess what? I can't live up to it either. There's not a person in this room that can live up to it. But you know what? It is Jesus Christ who lives through us and in us. And once you receive him, you got somebody to live with you. The old gospel song says, I have somebody with me. He's there all the time. Amen. What I can't do by myself, Christ can do through me. That's just a flippant excuse that will send you away from the presence of God. Why not accept the fact that Christ can live that life through you? Philippians 3.10 says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. What is the power of his resurrection? 
that when things don't go like I think they ought to, I still live it out in the max for Jesus Christ. When it's not what I think, it doesn't matter. It's what he thinks. And it doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's how God feels about it. And the truth is that through that power of the resurrection, can you imagine these disciples? They expected Jesus to rise up as a king to deliver Israel and to give them military victory and economic victory and political victory. But he didn't do that. He died. And they said, this is not at all what we had in mind. God said, but it's what I had in mind. And when he raised them from the dead, he empowered them to live the Christian life, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Finally, that we have a future inheritance. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 through 21, if Christ is not raised from the dead, then your faith is in vain. But now is Christ risen from the dead. We talked about that at the sunrise service. And everything that God has promised you hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because it is a reality, it is a truth of God's love for you. I told them that, that I read this little statement that said, when Jesus went to the cross, it was the function of Jesus Christ as a check to pay in full all of our sin debt. But when he arose from the grave, everybody cheered because they said the check has cleared. I want to tell you this morning, the check's cleared. You ain't got to worry about waiting on anything or anyone. It's a done deal. All you need to do is receive the truth of the risen Lord for your heart and for your life. Because he lives, you can have eternal life in Him. You can have hope beyond compare. You see, Jesus Christ says, why don't you come to me today? Let me just say it once again. There are some of you who have never received Jesus Christ publicly, and you need to come today and say, hey, I'm not ashamed of Jesus, and I'm willing to follow the Lord and believers' baptism. You need to just step out and come on when we start singing them on. For some of you, you have a church membership somewhere, someplace. You might even have your husband's one place and yours another, or your family one place. You know, why not get it together? You're together in the Lord. Be unified in Him. Because He lives, you can come and be a part of His church family here today. And you can serve the living God. Listen, Christian, because He lives, you can face tomorrow. And no matter what you face or how it is, this altar is open for you to come and pray. If you can't kneel, you can come and have a seat or come and stand here. But I'm asking you right now, this very minute, to make a decision for God. Don't put it off. Don't let this time pass you by. God sent His Son. He died and He rose again. And He says to you, come on. Come on. The check is cleared. You don't have anything to worry about. Just come and trust Him. Let's pray. Father, we ask You as our pianist comes and we prepare to sing this hymn of invitation. Our organist is going to be playing. Brother John is going to be leading us. I pray right now in this time and this moment together that people will step out and surrender to the will of the risen Lord, we pray. Oh, God, who will be the first one? Who will be the one that will step out? And come on, what a day of life. What a day of victory through the power of the living God. May people come right this very minute, we pray. In Jesus' holy and precious name, may Christians lead the way because you are alive, because you live. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Let's all stand as we begin singing. You begin coming.